Greetings everyone, Brad here with Mild Mannered EDC. I hope you're doing really well out there. So today we're gonna to look at a relatively new offering from Columbia River Knife and Tool, or CRKT, Cricket, as some people call it. And that is, there it is, the CRKT Tuto, T-U-E-T-O. And according to their phonetic <laughs> spelling on the web, on their website, it is pronounced Tuto. Uh, interesting, yeah. This particular knife is a design collaboration with, there you go right there, Jesper Boxness. Very, very well-known, well-liked uh, designer. And he has done a number of things with um, CRKT as well in the past. Obviously the CRKT Pilar comes to mind. I know that's probably maybe his most well-known uh, collaboration with this particular company. So, you know, this is an interesting sort of puko y finish style kind of knife. Um, runs about $58 is what I'm seeing it out there in retail land. Uh, and it is made in Taiwan. Um, so there you go. Those are some of the details on it. And we're going to do a classic mild manner review today of this particular knife and see what we think about it. Like I said, I think it's kind of flying under the radar a little bit right now. I think it's still pretty new, but, you know, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to talk through uh, particularly since uh, it's with a designer that I know a lot of people really like and follow. Um, so there we go. So we'll 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 talk some specs. We'll do a little bit of a uh, size, some size comparisons, and then we'll get underway with our classic mild manner review. So some specs on this two toe. <laughs> You've got a blade length here of three point two eight inches. You've got a blade thickness here of uh, 0 0.11 inches. So, you know, it looked thicker than me, uh, th thicker than that to me uh, when I was looking at the stock, but sure enough, I checked it with my calipers and that's what it is. So there you go. Uh, handle length when it's closed up here is a 4.43 inches. Handle thickness, a little under half an inch at uh, 0.48 inches. And that gives you overall, when it's all opened up, tip to tail here of 7.75 inches with a weight of three and a half inches. Um, so it's a little bit over that uh, ounce and inch that I know some people really like, uh, but yeah, there you go. Not too bad. So very much a, a sort of um, medium-sized knife, I guess is the way I would describe that in terms of EDC. Has a couple interesting things going on with it, and we'll talk about those. So let's do a couple size comparisons first, though. And then first, I want to kind of compare it to another uh, Jesper Voxnes design, the Viper Knives Katla. There you go. And I think you can see some inspiration there uh, in the designs. Obviously the Katla is a bit fancier um, and certainly by magnitude of price, um, <laughs> but there's definitely some, you can see the, the Jesper uh, Voxnes DNA in there. Uh, how about a Spyderco Delica 4? And how about a Ontario, let me bump these up so you can actually see it. Uh, Ontario rat number one. This one obviously uh, modified a bit to make that a spidey rat. So that's uh, that's where you've got some size comparisons here. So hopefully that's helpful. Okay, let's talk about this knife. Uh, we're gonna do a classic mild manner review where we'll talk blade, action, scales and hardware, and then ergos and carry. So let's get in there on this blade. Very interesting blade. Uh, and the steel in particular <laughs> is very interesting. You've got, like I said, sort of this Puko, I mean, I guess technically, right, sort of drop point uh, style blade, but uh, definitely harkens back to sort of a Puko look to it. Um, very pointy, nice, considerable amount of blade, um, some belly here on the grind. You do have a satin finish on this particular grind. And uh, the steel is 1.4116 steel. And that, for those of you that don't know, is basically you find that in Swiss Army Knives. Yep, it's a Swiss Army Knife steel. So here's sort of the take on that. Um, it is a good steel in terms of corrosion resistance. It's a good steel in terms of being able to get it to a razor sharp edge uh, and stropping it up, et cetera. It does not hold <laughs> an edge very long at all. So I think that's the biggest knock on that here. I think most interesting to me is that you just don't see that very often on many production um, you know, flipper style knives outside of Swiss Army anymore. So it's a really interesting choice by CRKT. I'm not sure uh, why they decided to go that route, um, but it's curious um, and I at least give them points for you know, doing something that not everybody's really doing right now at the moment. So whether you like that or not, that's up to you. Uh, as, and I remind you of that $58 price point, uh, if you think it justifies that as well, something to keep in mind. But 
There you go. Now, you know, I found the grind on this to be pretty darn good. Uh, it's pretty even and symmetrical on both sides, and it came pretty darn sharp. It's not the sharpest knife I've ever had out of the box. And in fact, I do think the uh, it's about 30 thousandths behind the edge, uh, is what I can tell with my caliper. It's a little bit fat behind the edge, in my opinion. It's not as potentially slicey as it maybe have could have been considering, you know, they had a, an opportunity to do a pretty sig a significant flat grind here. Um, so anyways, just something to think about. But that's sort of where you are with the blade. There is no um, chamfering really to speak of on the spine. It's definitely 90 degree angles there. And there is uh, obviously the um, imagery there or imagery sort of logos, CRKT, this here, this uh, particular logo here, if you can see that little circle with the arrows, that has to do with the ball bearing system, um, which we'll talk about in action, which, you know, I guess we should just do right now. So the action on this knife, yeah, it's actually assisted. Did not see that coming. <laughs> this is an assisted knife. So it's got a spring assist in it, very interesting, but it's it's a spring assist operating on IKBS bearings. And I don't know that I've ever actually come across that before. Um, it's really curious to me. I'm not sure what the motivation was for that. So IKBS, for those of you unaware, uh, I think it's Icoma Korth, uh, I think is the I and the K in that uh, bearing system. Basically what that means is there's sort of grooves inside here and a bunch of loose um, greased up ball bearings that are sort of in here. So actually, <laughs> um, you know, IKBS can be a bit of a, a hairy situation when you, if you want to disassemble it in terms of having potentially little ball bearings running all over the place. Um, they're not caged, for example, as you might see in a traditional ball bearing type system or setup. So a little bit different there. And then you add into that that it's got a spring assist in there somewhere. Very interesting. Um, you know, the action's good though, as a result, right? It's smooth. It's obviously super snappy because of that assist and gliding on all those little bearing balls in there. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a ton to, you know, I guess if you're okay with assisted, this has got a, a nice action. What I will give it credit for in terms of being assisted is it's very easy to close with one hand. And that can be a pain with certain knives that are assisted. In fact, I think I have, uh, here we go, the SOG. Um, this one is not the, I mean, it's, it's not terrible, but it, it's definitely not as easy, uh, to do that sort of one-handed, uh, assisted close. So this one though, you know, no problem right at all. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's, it's got a nice snappy action, um, but definitely assisted. So be aware of that as you go down now, or as you consider a purchase, as you can see a liner lock. And that is pretty common with IKBS, uh, either a liner or frame lock situation. Uh, you can see we got about a 50% lock up there. And there is no blade play or blade rock. This is super solid. In fact, this knife in general is, is quite solid. Um, so, you know, not a lot to complain about in, in that front. But that's where we're sitting with, with the um, action. So I do think it's really interesting that it's, it's this sort of combination of assisted and IKBS. So be aware of that. All right. Now let's move into... Um, scales and hardware. So here we've got this uh, OD Green uh, G10, which is pretty darn, yeah, um, it's pretty grippy. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that a little more in carry, but yeah, it, it's got some pretty good uh, grip to it. In addition to that, you've got stainless steel liners, which are, I don't know, let me see if I can, with this flow through construction, you can see maybe potentially in there. I don't know. Uh, they did skeletonize them, I guess is what I'm ultimately trying to show you. Uh, they skeletonized them out, which is nice. I really always appreciate that because it does help with weight reduction. Um, so in this case, that's what you've got with the stainless steel liners. You do have this um, brass backspacer, which again, I draw some comparisons here to the Katla. I pronounce Katla. I mean, it's not quite identical, but it's, it's getting right there. So uh, it does create this... Um, backspacer and lanyard loop in terms of the uh, little brass piece you got there. So it adds a little accent color as well. Um, there you go. We've got a stainless steel clip and then that about does it for scales and hardware. I mean, that's pretty much what we've got here. So let's talk about ergos and carry. So ergos in hand, this feels good. Um, it, it feels good to carry this. Um, you know, maybe if you've got a really big hand, you might start to feel a little crowded because of, especially with this little hook here on the butt of, um, uh, the the uh, handle here, but um, by and large, it feels good in hand. And in fact, you can choke up a little bit. I don't really recommend that. I, this is more of a sharpening choil than a finger choil, in my opinion. Um, it's sort of the, 
you know, could it be a finger trial? Yes, I guess technically, but uh, and it's, you know, which sometimes to be honest with you, I don't know how much I like that. Um, I'd almost prefer if they just were going to do a trial, just do a trial, um, a finger trial instead of this sort of in between, is it a sharpening trial? Is it a finger trial? I don't know. Uh, but that's sort of where this is at. Um, so that gets us to kind of, so the ergos are not bad, This, but this is where it gets to my biggest complaint on the knife. And like I said, by and large, up till now, you know, apart from the steel, which is a little maybe questionable uh, of a choice for at least certainly the price, um, the uh, carry on this is not great. And the reason I say it's not great is because one, this stainless steel clip has the firmest, I mean, I am doing everything I can here. Oh, oh I mean. It's just, I mean, look at what it did to my finger. I mean, it is super, super, super stiff. Uh, I think it's the stiffest clip I've ever encountered, and I don't know why that's the case, but, ooh, man. Um, I mean, I could try to show you, try and put it here on a hank. Oh, I mean, it is just, it's not coming out. I'll give you that. Once it's, ugh, once it's in there, uh, it's not, <laughs> it's not coming out of your pocket, that's for sure. Uh, but it is definitely... Yeah, I'm not a fan of this clip. I mean, I think the clip could be cool, but it's just, it's so darn stiff. Uh, it was really a problem getting it in and out of the pocket. I just didn't like that at all. On top of that, you have, it sitting right on this really grippy G10. So at a minimum, this thing is going to be a pocket eater. Uh, you know, it, it could in fact be a pocket destroyer. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it is, yeah, that is my biggest gripe is on the carry component of this. It's just not very good uh, in terms of carry. That said, you know, sort of overall and wrapping this up, you know, I, I, I kind of like, I kind of like this. I like it in, in the sense that I, I kind of dig the design. I think the ergos are good. I'm intrigued by the fact that it's a flipper or that it's an assisted flipper, uh, but also running on IKBS. That will make, um, like I said, disassembly a bit of a nightmare, but regardless, um, you know, uh, oh, I'm sorry. And I didn't even mention it is uh, a reversible pocket clip. Um, in terms of tip up, but left, right. So you're able to do that and they include the screws there. And in fact, the screw uh, is not going into the backspace or it actually goes into the liner. So uh, I think that's actually a pretty interesting little design thing that they managed to get, you know, basically only two screws on there. So uh, anyways, there you go. But yeah, I mean, so overall, I think this is a pretty darn decent knife. Um, it's not for me really, um, but, but I appreciate what it's trying to do. Uh, it may speak to you a bit more, particularly if you like some of the components of it with regards to assisted flippers and, and sort of the, the, that um, Scandinavian type design. You know, there you go. For 60 bucks, I don't know, you decide if it's worth that to you or not, but I think that's where I land on this particular two toe. <laughs> so with that, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you're, uh, let me know down in the comments what you think of this particular CRKT. Uh, I think it's Got some things going for it. It's definitely got a little, some drawbacks, but there you go. Most importantly, stay safe out there. Be mild-mannered to one another. And all the best.